Hi everyone, it is the end of week six, moving on to week seven, finishing out the month of February and hopefully moving on to warmer weather and longer days. You've completed your first essay, the, the comparison contrast, and now we are moving on to this, the illustration essay. So last week you read a bit about the assignment and what illustration writing is. And so this week we are moving into talking a little bit more about the various ways that you can construct a body paragraph. One of those methods is called PI. PI stands for point, illustration, and explanation. And it is a great way to frame your body paragraphs to incorporate source material or quotations that you have taken from another source. And so it looks like having a point, which is usually a topic sentence, you illustrate with a quote from someone else. So you might find a statistic or a startling or interesting quote from another source, maybe from the many films that you're watching. And then you explain how that quote or, or illustration uh, helps to support your overall argument and then your overall thesis. So it is a nice structured way to build your body paragraphs using outside sources, which is a requirement for this essay. So you are being asked to take a look at those PI uh, documents in, in number one. For number two, you were asked to review the PI paragraph that is given to you and answer some questions related to it. So you can start to suss out the particular areas of what's the point, what's the illustration, and what's the explanation. And that will help you to mimic that later when you're writing your own essay. We are asking you to start doing a little bit of outside research. Um, we have encouraged you to check out those mini films by the New York Times, and those are all linked in the assignment sheet. But you are also encouraged to um, check out what we have in our library databases. As college students, you are paying fees to access some of these databases that are not accessible to the general public, which means that you can find resources that are often better and more reliable than just doing a Google search yourself. And we have fantastic librarians at Western who are ready and eager to help you find research material, as this will not be the only time in your college career that you do research. So um, make sure to check out those sources. And though we can't physically go into the library right now, um, they can help you find materials, get access to PDFs, HTML, even have some of that information sent from other libraries if need be. You are then going to be reading about integrating quotations into your writing. And because this is a requirement of this next essay, that means that you need to learn how to set it up. And we've given you a few samples there from Aaron and I. When you introduce somebody else's words or ideas into your essays, you want to tell your reader who that person is. If I don't know who Joe Smith is and you quote him, um, my first question as a critical reader will be, well, who is he and what does he do and why should I trust him on this topic? So giving a brief bio, if it's somebody that most people know, so let's say Oprah Winfrey or Gandhi, you don't typically need to tell your audience who they are, but most of the people that you're quoting are going to be people that we aren't familiar with. So make sure you give a brief context to who that person is and then set up the quote. That's where the pi paragraph structure really helps is because it gives a cushion for that outside information for you to set it up and then explain what it's doing there. And then Aaron and I, we recently learned a little bit more about Flipgrid and we're going to try a little bit of a Flipgrid exercise with you here. We're asking you to re record short minute and a half and no more videos on what you're thinking of writing about. And these will appear as a minute and a half videos that Aaron and I can see and your classmates can see, um, but you're not required to comment on unless you want to. So it's just another way for us to hear each other, see each other, kind of talk through our ideas before we write them down. And if you do have questions as you are talking through your video, you can put them there too. And um, this is a small point assignment, but again, another way for you to verbalize what you're thinking of and share it with the class. Hopefully all of you will be able to log in and use Flipgrid. As we've said here, Google seems to be easier than Microsoft when you are asked to pick which one. So um, try that. And if it doesn't work, let us know and we'll try to, we'll try to troubleshoot it together. 
And then under here, we have some additional textbook reading that you can do, as well as a reminder of Western's Online Writing Center that's always open to you for feedback on your drafts. One more thing that I wanted to mention is that you are encouraged to and allowed to do revisions on your essays. And so if you received your grade for essay number one, the contrast comparison contrast essay, you're not satisfied with it, you are certainly welcome to revise it and resubmit it and I will grade it as a completely new essay. And what I tend to do is have a kind of a stop date for accepting those and then about mid-April, like a week or two before classes end so that I have time to regrade if need be. And I will put that information on Blackboard as we get closer to it. But if you know that you want to revise the essay now and have it fresh in your memory, I encourage you to do that. And of course, you can reach out to Erin or I for some more feedback. If you want to talk through some of the comments on the essay, you want to meet with a writing tutor or submit to the Online Writing Center, those are always options available to you. So I wanted to mention that too. All right. So that's the end of my preview for this week. And uh, if you have questions, as always, you know where to reach us and have a good one, everybody. Thanks.